So the most common and a general question that they ask is, is anesthesia safe? Yes, a vehement yes. There is no, no doubt that anesthesia is safe. And gone are the days with basic anesthesia equipment. Now everything is uh, computerized. Uh, is there any lower age limit? Can anesthesia be given to neonates and infants? Yes, very much. We can um, do surgeries right from the time the baby is born. Uh, what are the precautions to follow before anesthesia? Yeah, the most important uh, thing in terms of uh, the anesthesia point of view is the fasting status. What about pain? Yeah, this is uh, a topic which we give a lot of importance to. So we do take care right from the time the child is anesthetized uh, to make sure that the child is comfortable when, the, when he or she wakes up. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Kaushik. I'm consultant pediatric surgeon and a pediatric urologist at Manipal Hospital, Sajapur Road. With me today, I have Dr. Ravindra. Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, he's the head of the Department of Anesthesia. Uh, whenever a parent comes to me, more than the surgical aspect, the first and the foremost question that they ask is, is anesthesia safe for a child? So they have a lot of queries regarding the safety and how an anesthesia is administered to a child. So to clarify all the doubts, today I have with me the authority of anesthesia, Dr. Ravindra, uh, the head of department at Manipal Hospital, Sajapur Road. So I'll be asking him a few questions which the parents commonly do ask me and he'll be clarifying all the queries. Thank you Dr. Kaushik for having me here. Happy yes, to answer the questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure having you here. Thank you. So, I, there are a few questions which parents commonly keep asking me. Uh, from my side, whatever I do tell, uh, if they hear it from you, I think they'll be more assured. So, to clarify the doubts, uh, I think this session would be very useful. So, I'll directly jump into those questions and yes. uh, I think you will be able to help us out. So, the most common and a general question that they ask is, is anesthesia safe? Yes, a vehement yes. There is no, no doubt that anesthesia is safe. Over the period of years, we have evolved uh, in terms of safety in anesthesia. We now have more computerized uh, workstations. Uh, gone are the days with basic anesthesia equipment. Now everything is uh, computerized. It is like a pilot's cockpit. We can measure each and every parameter of the child, uh, be it a heart rate, uh, oxygen emission level, how the patient is breathing, is the child doing well in terms of blood pressure, color, everything can be monitored. And also we can monitor the uh, child's body temperature even. Uh, and also uh, in terms of the drugs we use over the period of years, we have uh, more evolved modern um, anesthesia medicines with very minimal side effects. And even the side effects are uh, very much manageable and tolerable. Uh, like you said, even I keep giving the same example of a uh, aeroplane. Like a uh, flight has to have a lot of safety checklist because the pilot has a lot of responsibility of carrying the passengers from one destination to another. So, like the uh, right, like rightly that you said, it's definitely uh, a pilot's cockpit. Yes. So, next question is: uh, Does anesthesia cause neurological damage? Yeah, I can answer these uh, this question in two parts. Uh, a lot of people uh, are scared of anesthesia because of <clears throat> few uh, incidents of uh, brain damage or anesthesia related uh, complications which have occurred uh, and uh, for obvious reasons since the child is involved it is an emotional issue and uh, the press also have highlighted this uh, in the newspapers. So when I speak to the parents most of the times they refer to these articles in magazines uh, and other forms of media. Um, so, uh, like I told you, even if, in, if again I'll go back to the analogy of aircrafts. If there is an air crash, it definitely makes big news because it is not expected. We do thorough checks before, during, and even after the uh, procedure as well. So there's nothing to fear in, in those terms. And there is one more reason why a lot of uh, parents are worried. One is uh, referring to an American study. Uh, Food and Drug Administration also has highlighted the fact that there could be some neurological damage uh, in terms of uh, anesthesia administration. 
um, uh, most of these studies are done in animals and um, there is so far nothing in the literature which proves that there is any uh, damage if at all uh, during anesthesia the only thing uh, which we are also concerned is when the child has to have repeated episodes of anesthesia um, so that will maybe maybe there will be uh, some effects regarding that but that is true in terms of any kind of medicines which yes. they receive yes. not specifically to anesthesia correct so to answer your question it does not cause any neurological damage like when we uh, go for x rays one of an x ray or one ct occasionally done Yes. doesn't cause much of a radiation exposure Correct. any person who has to undergo repeated x-rays and repeated radiation is well what is risky same holds good for anesthesia also like one of a surgery which is the most likely scenario in most of our pediatric surgery cases will not have a lasting neurological damage at all agree with you completely yes yeah. yes uh, is there any lower age limit can anesthesia be given to neonates and infants yes very much Uh, again referring back to the advances made in uh, anesthesia technology and the medicines we can um, do surgeries right from the time the baby is born uh, and there is no upper limit uh, at all the only limiting factor is the condition of the baby yes. the uh, the health of the baby and what condition the baby is when they reach the hospital so that actually dictates um, how safe the anesthesia is for that particular child yes yes uh, moving on uh, how is anesthesia given are there injections done before the child sleeps how is the child put to sleep yeah so we do make changes uh, for um, children because they are obviously very afraid of needles yes so yes. while we have a, a pre anesthesia checkup we uh, try to talk to the child allay the fears of the parents uh, even before the anesthesia is administered we have a pre anesthesia checkup room where we we would try to meet the ch- children or if they are already admitted we do a pre operative visit uh, in the ward where we explain everything in detail and so the what we generally try to do if possible we give them some syrups which can make them drowsy and it makes it easier for them to separate from the parents and we always ask the parents to accompany the child up to the operating room entrance that is the policy of our hospital in rare cases we may ask the parents to come in but mostly we receive them at the operating room entrance and the administration of anesthesia is mostly in, in terms of gas inhalation we have an apparatus which is just like a regular oxygen mask which is held on to the baby's uh, face which covers its mouth and nose and that through that we give an anesthetic gas which makes the child drowsy so as the child keeps inhaling this gas the child falls asleep and then we administer the intravenous line or the drip as it's called in layman's language and the intravenous anesthetic agents are then administered through that right. so the child will never remember how the child was anesthetized the last thing the child will probably remember is the mask, mask. being held to its face yes. and by the time the child wakes up surgery is done and the child is awake okay so to add to this uh, as a surgeon what i personally follow is uh, i would have had the interaction with the parents and the child in the opd room so there's a kind of a bond which is already developed between us uh, and when basically the child has a stranger anxiety so uh, if you have noticed that i keep accompanying the child along uh, till the ot table so that someone familiar Uh, who's there with the child? The child also might feel, though scared, a little less. Whatever that I could contribute from my side as a surgeon side. So that those ways, as at Manipal Sajapur Road, we do take care so that the child has a pleasant experience. That definitely helps. Uh, the next question: uh, Are parents allowed to watch while anesthesia is given? I think you have already touched upon this, but a little more. Yes, as a policy, uh, we have seen that. Um, Uh, children become more uh, aggressive or more tense and ask for more attention than the parents are around and also from the parents point of view they may feel the the way we are administering anesthesia and the whole uh, ot environment uh, very uh, scary so for these two reasons we don't um, advise them to accompany the children uh, but your children are per- perfectly safe in our hands we do take care of them like our own children yes well said sir uh, 
how will the child be post anesthesia when can we feed the child uh, usually uh, the child will be a little drowsy which is the way we want the children because if we make them totally awake and bring them out the, they will be very anxious and they may start uh, crying and screaming and all that we don't want that correct so we kind of uh, make sure the child is drowsy we uh, after the surgery is over and the child wakes up from anesthesia we have a separate uh, post anesthesia care unit or pacu for short where all the post operative patients are held we have separate um, beds and separate monitors for children as such uh, because they require specialized equipment yes. Yes. so we do have all that for all kinds of children so we keep them there and we would have already communicated to the mother even before the uh, child wakes up from the surgery yes. so that they can change into the uh, scrubs and be waiting by the bedside uh, to receive the child correct so apart from the nurse who is in the pacu the one of the parents is allowed who can spend time with the child and they can also uh, have a relief to see that the child is all right yes so the when the child has uh, the surgery is done and the child is wheeled out of the ot room in the recovery the parents are already there to receive the child and the child is in a known environment mm -hmm. or a person with a known person which is more comforting yeah and yes. to answer the next part of your question when can the child start feeding yes if it's very small children who are exclusively breastfed maybe an hour is enough mm. but generally we want them to be fasting for at least two more hours uh, just so that we can make sure that the child is okay one basic thing is definitely that the child should be awake and alert before we start feeding yeah. more than the time so once the child is awake and alert and we feel the child is otherwise all, all right we start we encourage the child, uh, mothers to feed uh, with sips of water If the child doesn't have any issues tolerating that then we move over to uh, clear uh, with juices milk or soft solids yeah. in a graded manner many parents do have a concern as to is it too as already the child would have been fasting before surgery yes. further to us post surgery so they are usually scared but out of experience i am sure you will also agree that with the kind of drowsiness and also with the mother comforting most of the time this two hours they will not even realize that it is two hours and the child is uh, ready to take feeds at the end of that time correct yeah um, next question is uh, what are the precautions to follow before anesthesia yeah the most important uh, thing in terms of uh, the anesthesia point of view is the fasting status we want the children to be fasting for at least 6 hours that is in case the child is taking formula feed milk uh, the cow's milk or any solid feeds if it's very small babies who are exclusively breastfed we are okay with 4 hours of fasting and if a child has had some water or clear liquids we are okay to be fasting for maybe 2 hours before the surgery yes yes uh, the last uh, question uh, sir what about pain uh, if you may please highlight as an anesthetist role in the pain management post surgery. Yeah, this is a, a topic which we give a lot of importance to because um, although the parents and the children are very anxious before the surgery, if you add a pain component to this when the child wakes up, the whole experience is very bad. Okay. And the children in pain are very difficult to manage um, both from the parent's point of view and from the hospital point of view. So we do take care right from the time the child is anesthetized uh, to make sure that the child is comfortable when, the, when he or she wakes up. This is in terms of intravenous painkillers. We do have strong medicines which we can use during the surgery. In addition, we have what are called the regional anesthesia blocks. We follow ultrasound guided nerve blocks. Uh, there are various uh, procedures uh, which are done on the spine and on the uh, torso of the baby where the sur surgery is done or even in the upper limbs or lower limbs where we can target specific nerves and administer under ultrasound guidance the painkillers which will effectively give them pain relief for about 8 to 10 hours yes. so by the time uh, these uh, painkillers wear off we would have supplemented them with intravenous painkillers which are given round the clock yeah. so the children are Definitely happy almost for 85 to 95 percent. Can relieve there. Yes. So 
uh, with my interactions with sir also what we always follow is before even we cut we make a cut on the body if the analgesics are there and the blocks that you mentioned just like it works very similar to epidural anesthesia which mothers take during uh, delivery and even in fact better than that uh, so since the brain has not even perceived the pain uh, even though the child is anesthetized uh, the brain has not perceived the signals from the nerves it has already been blocked post surgery when the child wakes up also the pain perception is hardly anything correct so that way uh, and post surgery i think most of the time i have seen you prescribe uh, simple drugs like paracetamol which can con uh, continue as a maintenance after the medicines have already been given during anesthesia okay. so that way uh, most of them have always been uh, happy especially uh, what i have noticed in the ward when i go for post operative rounds is uh, minor cases like hernia hydrocele circumcisions the child uh, is already walking around and uh, by afternoon <coughs> and uh, even major cases like hypospadia since you uh, usually give caudal anesthesia uh, with the catheter the tube which is there to drain the urine uh, they are quite comfortable in wearing the diaper and the next day the child is uh, holding the parents hand and doing a little bit of walking around in the room so definitely pain management uh, as what you have highlighted makes uh, the hospital experience more pleasurable yes that's our whole idea yeah uh, so these were the most common points which the parents have always been raising uh, i hope the concerns are addressed any further queries please do reach out to us at manipal hospital sarjapur road thank you yes we are always ready to address your concerns yeah. thank you sir thank you